Hi everyone, welcome to this video and a series of videos on dispatching the signaling system on the SLS Railroad. This video is going to cover turnouts and the various aspects of those turnouts and how to deal with things such as local control and throwing turnouts for complex OS's and multi-switch ladders. First off, we'll just cover a simple OS and a simple turnout. Up here turnout 49 at East Sweetwater, you'll notice that we have the three signals as we've covered in other videos. These are at a halt state. And the turnout is right here in the middle. If you get the, turn, the cursor or the mouse close to the turnout and you click, you should be able to throw the turnout. You can throw the turnout at any time when you do not have an occupancy and when all the signals are at stop. If you have a signal at anything other than a stop indication, you will not be able to throw the turnout. That's a, fe that's a feature of interlocking in CTC. So I'll clear that signal again. In this case, I'm just sitting there throwing the turnout back and forth. And I can do this, and the turnout on the layout will immediately respond as I do this. Since I'm not hooked up to the layout, um, I'm basically just in illustrating what's going on. Next, we'll go to a little bit more complex, um, such as within the OS at West Riverton, we have essentially two separate OSs, plus we have three turnouts located within the OS. We have a crossover 63 and 67, which have two turnouts. If I clear one route, say on main two, going eastbound, I still cannot clear a route on 63 down on main 1 because it is interlocked with the route that's lined through on main 2. So just keep that in mind. That would be why you would not be able to throw that. Next, at the yard lead, I would be able to throw it because it's not being affected by the route on main 2. But if I route a line through on main 1, such as that, that would prohibit me from being able to throw any of these turnouts. I'll go ahead and clear that. Again, when you're throwing a crossover such as this, you are in fact throwing two turnout motors. For slightly more complicated, up here say at West South Pass or over here at Fremont, everything is interlocked. Now, if I decide that I want to throw something on the main line, this is one area where the system has a little bit of an oversight and a little bit of a deficiency, but if I clear a route at West South Pass and inadvertently through the turnout 35 because it's within the OS, it will knock my routing down. So you don't want to do that. You want to just kind of pay attention. Normally that would not be permissible within a normal prototypical signaling system, but in our case, since that seems to be something that was overlooked, it is. Just keep in mind, once you've routed a line through, just keep your mouse away from throwing any turnouts. But as you can tell, you must have all of the turnouts lined up for the direction you want. And in the case of bringing something out of Atlantic City, I would have to have it lined up that way. If I had that lined up, it would not allow me to do it. Or if I had something such as that, it would still not allow me to do it. Anything like that is going to show me that I have a conflict and that I would not be able to route that. Finally, the most probably the most complicated OS in the entire on the entire layout is probably going to be West Sage. West Sage has a Y plus a crossover and other associated turnouts. These ones in red are local control. I'll get into those colors in just a moment. So in order to route through the West Sage Y, I would have to make sure that I have all my lines light uh, excuse me, lined up and then I would just simply clear my route and it would follow the path where the lines are complete. That one won't allow me to do it because I have a turnout against me. So as you can see I have a whole basically a whole variety of options open to me and how I wish to route my trains by simply clicking on the turnouts. Up here at West Sage, you are changing three individual turnout motors, but they will all respond to however I need that to be lined up. So if I wanted to do that, which we normally don't do, 
that would give me the option. There is some, uh, there is a uh, reverse block or a reversing section on the West Sage Y that the crews would need to handle out on the layout. So that would be something that they could do, but they would need to understand how to change the polarity on the track. So we don't do this maneuver except on very rare occurrences. So in order to clear a route, you just simply throw, or you simply just line your route and then click on your signal. Also, you cannot change a turnout once the block is occupied. And as we indicated in signals video, you can't throw a turnout once you have, or you can't line a route once you have something on the given section of track. I'll go ahead and clear that. Yeah, that one seems to keep. Go ahead and clear West Sage. There we go. As I mentioned a moment ago, we have local control switches. These turnouts are switches that are mimicking what are known as electric lock switches or non-motorized but electrically locked switch mechanisms out on the railroad. Red ones are indicative of local control turnouts and are not to be controlled by the dispatcher. You have one here at Superior Paper Industrial Lead, the Steel Mill Lead at West Sage, and the Helper Pocket. We also have them over here at Hudson Station Track and Hudson Helper Pocket. Turnouts that are in green are local control switches. Those are turnouts that can be controlled both by the dispatcher and by the crews out in the field after they've taken the switch into unlock. Yellows are switches that can only be controlled by the dispatcher and have no local control features. The gray one, zero and 61 at Arapaho Industrial Lead are turnouts that do not have a motor on them and only are detected as far as point position. So the crews have the ability to throw them at will. This is not an entirely prototypical aspect, but time constraints are such that currently this turnout has not been changed over to a prototypical electric lock switch. That will probably happen at some time in the future. This switch over here for this small spur is the RDC spur and is used very seldom and is not thrown. Therefore, it was deemed not necessary to put this into full electric lock control. It will still indicate position of the turnout, as will all the other electric lock and dual control turnouts on the layout. They will all indicate position. As far as local control switches go, such as 15, 11, 3, 59, and 57, all of those turnouts, and specifically the ones within West Sage, 3, and all these others, are under the West Sage local control panel. So the crews must take the entire OS into unlock. When they take the OS into unlock on the panel, they insert their key, which is a small little funnel plug. That will create a detect or that will create a signal and send it to the signaling system, indicating that it wishes to unlock the electric locks, and all of this will turn red, such as this. Excuse me, wrong one. We will occupy West Sage. All of this would turn red, as you can see. This prevents you from being able to route a train through this section of track. I will go ahead and unoccupy that. The crews will insert that and that will automatically go red and will clear when they have removed their key from the electric lock. Again, it's just a means of showing occupancy to prevent any trains from utilizing the track that is in unlock at the time. As we mentioned before, here at Arapaho Industrial Lead, when this turnout is thrown for the industrial lead, because we had a few issues with the signaling system being able to handle a turnout being thrown while there was a route being lined, since that is not something that is prototypically done, we show that on this little section of track up here. This section of track will show the divergent, such as what we've done here. It would show a little section. It would show the slant line going down 
as it would here. And this here would also show red when there is something over that section of track. Also, this little vertical line, the brake line, would also show as an occupy, if I can get it to go occupied. I may not be able to get it to go occupied. I cannot get it to go occupied. But rest assured, this vertical line will go occupied when this turnout is thrown. And if this turnout remains thrown, you would just need to contact the crews via radio and request that they set that turnout back to the main line and lock it in place before you'd be able to send a train through. Most crews will contact you and notify you when they are clear of the main line and are safely in the Arapaho industrial tracks. <laughs> Turnouts on this section of track, such as when it's dark, are not able to be thrown. They do not throw. They're just simply there for illustration purposes. Also, the turnouts that are up at Atlantic City, because they are in dark territory, do not physically control anything. They are simply there for illustration purposes. So just keep that in mind. Lastly, West Bear River OS being integrated with the West Bear River slash Woodruff traffic panel is the only turnout that is in regular colored track that is not controlled from the panel. It is controlled from this icon here in the West Bear River Woodruff traffic panel and is integrated with the traffic levers and the control system of the panel. So in order to throw that one you would simply turn it and press the button and it would indicate a thrown status. It again is interlocked with the signals. We will get into this more in the West Bear River slash Woodruff traffic panel but I wanted to cover that and just notify you that that is a difference on the panel. So with that in mind, we'll go ahead and end this video. We appreciate your attention and we appreciate you viewing this video. And we hope you have a nice day. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us. And we will try to provide valid information to your inquiries. Thank you. Have a good day.